the presentation is by dr riya singh who is a second year postgraduate resident from postgraduate institute ycm hospital uh, dr riya you can begin your case presentation thank you sir uh, good afternoon everyone i'm dr riya singh second year postgraduate from ycm hospital and my case is a 3 and a half year female child born of a uh, second born of non consanguineous marriage resident of nigri pune hailing from gulbarg karnataka religion being hindu and informants uh, being parents fairly reliable presented with complaints of fever on and off since last one year failure to gain weight since last one year there was increased work of breathing since last one year but more during the last two days uh, before admission and decreased oral acceptance and lethargy since last two days before the admission uh, child was apparently all right one year back when child started having fever which was insidious in onset uh, intermittent on and off once or twice a week it was low grade without any diurnal variation and relieved on medication child also had fast breathing which was insidious in onset persistent fast breathing present at rest also Uh, according to mother child was able uh, before one year the child was able to run and walk up the stairs but now stops after walking for some distance waxing and waning episode of increased and prolonged breathlessness with cough requiring hospitalization twice in last one year child was admitted one year back in pic in karnataka for one month for similar complaints of fever increased work of breathing and lethargy where parents were told about child having some lung disease with severe anemia and required blood transfusion post hospital hospitalization child is on oxygen supplementation at home and her saturation level is monitored by the parents regularly work of breathing increases if oxygen sa- uh, supplementation is stopped with bluish discoloration of lips child is able to do daily activity with oxygen support child was uh, again admitted for a month in pic for similar complaints after two months of discharge Four months back, two D echo was done, which was suggestive of some incre- uh, increase in pressure in heart. So some medications were started. There was no weight gain. Patient also complained. Uh, parents also complained the child was not gaining weight since last one year. Documented weight remained static over last one year. That is ten kgs. There is no history of reduced appetite. Negative history. There is no history of persistent cough, cold, nasal, or ear discharge. There is no history of vomiting, hemoptysis, or hematemesis. Uh, no history of choking or coughing during feed. No history of night sweats or any cox contact. There is no history of rash, oral ulcer, or joint pain. No history of atopy in form of any rash or any nebulizations in the past. And there is no history of any GI involvement or any other system involvement. Course during hospital. After admission in her hospital, child was started on oxygen. IV medications were started. Blood transfusion was given, and investigations were done. Currently, work of breathing has reduced. Child is playful and accepting orally well, but requires oxygen supplementation. Mm-hmm. Past history: There is no significant past history. Child did not require any admission or outpatient treatment for initial two and a half years of age. Mm-hmm. Family history. Child is second born of non-consanguineous marriage. No similar complaints in family. No history of cox contact. Father was admitted two years back for COVID pneumonia. Birth history was uneventful. Antenatal history: Mother was registered immunized. Iron and folic acid supplementation was taken with no history of any medical illness in mother. All ANC USG is done were normal. Natal history: Child was full term normal vaginal delivery. Cried immediately after birth. It was in hospital delivery. Child weighed two point five kg and there was no NICU stay. postnatal history exclusive breastfeeding uh, was done up to 6 months of age after that complementary feed was started developmental history age appropriate milestones have been achieved child is completely immunized uh, up to the age as per national immunization schedule diet history uh, according to last uh, 24 hour recall method child accepts 100 uh, 1146 kilo calories per day as expected for 1500 kilo calories per day giving us a deficit of 354 kilo calories per day and obs- uh, protein consumption is 17 grams per day uh, for an expected of 20 grams giving us a deficit of 3 grams socio economic history family belongs to upper lower class according to modified kuppu swami scale with a score of 10 summary a 3 and a half year a uh, girl with history of fever increased work of breathing and oxygen requirement and not gaining weight since last one year is a case of acquired 
chronic and slowly progressive illness involving respiratory system, microanatomy being lung interstitium or parenchyma and or uh, parenchyma probable etiology being post-infective or immune mediated. Dr. Ria. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I have a few questions. Now, when you give the summary in this child, you said that this is an acquired chronic and slowly progress, progressive illness. What do you, why do you say it was acquired? Why cannot be, it, it be a congenital problem? Mom, because the age of presentation was late. After like two and a half years, child had no complaints. And after that, no, the, child the child has had, this child is approximately three and a half years old, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, and the complaint started at two and a half years. That's what you said. Yes, so can you think of any congenital problems which can start later on in life? Oh, uh, ma'am, congenital uh, uh, heart disease can present late, uh, like VSD, uh, sorry, TOF can present late if it is pink TOF initially. But uh, it, will uh, that pink TOF come to you with re repeated respiratory distress, fever? No, ma'am. I'm asking about repeated chest infections, fever, something which can come up later on in life. Yes, you said congenital heart is one reason. So do you think it is a cyanotic congenital heart which can come late or something which can come late is acyanotic? Which acyanotic heart disease can come later on in life? VSD and ASD mom can present. Does VSD later present later. later on in life? Yes, ma'am. VSD does present later on? Uh, if it, VSD, if it is initially compensated, it won't present initially in initial stage, uh, initial years of life and later when decompensated, it can present. Okay. Anything else in the respiratory system? Since, you know, from the history, you know, you've gone to, uh, say, uh, microanatomy being lung interstitium. How can you decide the microanatomy on history alone? What uh, made you think it was a lung interstitium? Ma'am, if it involved the airway, then cuff uh, will be the more prominent complaint of the child. Are you sure? Uh, cuff. The upper airways? Can you yes, think of any obstructive lesions in the upper airways which can uh, present as breathlessness, repeated breathlessness without cough? Uh, foreign body but cuff will be there now. Ma'am, if post nasal drip is there or adenoids are there, then also the child can present uh, without cuff. Post nasal drip will have nighttime cough, right? On lying down. Na uh, nighttime cough will be there. See, what I'm trying to say is that when you give a detailed history, it is very important for you to understand that in your summary, don't go to the micro level. Because if you give such a diagnosis, the examiner has a feeling that you probably know the case. Okay, and when you can't defend yourself, that right now you can't defend yourself as to why there's a lung interstitium involvement and why a parenchymal involvement and why not any other systemic involvement. Mom, because the oxygen required uh, requirement was there for one year, complete one year, and uh, the cuff was not persistent uh, throughout the time. And it was only in between one or two episodes the child was having cuff. For which the child got admitted also. Yeah, but not every time they'll come with cuff, no? They can be, they've written their increased work on breathing in repeated episodes of fever. Second thing you've not mentioned that was every admission preceded by fever? Ma'am, fever, uh, they are not, uh, the specific history of fever is not there. It is just that ki one to two weeks, it is uh, sometimes the child is having a spike and otherwise it is not there. Yeah, but then you did mention that there were approximately three admissions in the past, right? For the this similar is the third admission, ma'am. Yeah, so this is the third admission. So was this thing, what I'm trying to ask you is that what decompensated the child? As a clinician, you are very. it is very important for you to analyze what decompensated the child. Why did the child suddenly decompensate? He was at home, he was doing okay, and then he decompensated. Was it infection or was it something else? Yes, ma'am, it was because of a uh, super added infection. Uh, the child had cough and uh, treatment was like IV antibiotics like some IV in medication was given and a child was discharged after a month yeah something else which can decompensate a child besides infection um, 
anemia can de uh, decompensate ma'am yeah that's very good he's got two transfusions in the past mm -hmm. right so why should this child in spite of two transfusions and when nutritionally this child is not very deprived you said should get anemia is it not something that you really have to think about oh uh, ma'am uh, anemia of chronic disease because of it so you think this is in, in simply an anemia of chronic disease uh, can any hematological condition present like this ma'am uh, sickle cell anemia or thalassemia can present this with uh, requiring repeated blood transfusion but just two transfusions in 3 years uh, then sickle can present like this ma'am not thalassemia okay okay any other any other anemia which can present like this you have repeated chest infections you have anemia and you have a child who is otherwise looking okay thriving okay and then suddenly decompensates what i'm trying to ask you is that don't stick only to respiratory okay try to analyze can this be cardiovascular can this you've mentioned immune mediated have you dug into the history of immune mediated mechanisms in this case so can it be a simple hiv yes ma'am it could be because of hiv also yeah so what what history in the antenatal history there are a few pointers which you have not mentioned can you just dig out your antenatal history if you could go to that slide yes ma'am Okay, so in their birth history, you've just said that antenatal history was uneventful, and she was uh, registered. And uh, here, I think uh, I would have said that she was not an immunocompromised mother because nowadays you know that they are all registered with immunocompromised. Here, I would make a special mention about it. You know, I think that is important. Second thing is uh, in the natal history and postnatal, you have to ask about delayed passage of meconium. Have you asked for history of delayed passage of meconium? Oh, my mother doesn't remember that much. Yeah, but then I think you sh it would have been helpful if you would have made a special mention about it. Why? Why did I ask for history of delayed passage of meconium? And for these tools later on. Oh, uh, ma'am, cystic fibrosis. Exactly. Uh, so you cystic, cystic fibrosis, fibrosis who may not be very symptomatic in the early years can become later on symptomatic, right? So that yes. is one thing which you always have to take back is that everything you know when you're putting a differential because in the summary you're giving me a differential right have you asked for history in the his uh, in the ODP is something which needs to be asked okay so oh, fine huh? so now if now could you just reframe your summary three and a half girl with history of fever increased work of breathing and oxygen requirement and not gaining weight since uh, weight since one year. Uh, acquired chronic and slowly progressive illness involving respiratory tract system so first i would like to rule out a respiratory tract involvement okay second don't ever say a respiratory system just say i would like to keep differentials in my mind one would be a respiratory tract involvement second i would also you've also mentioned some cardiac condition also in between in your history right cardiac yeah you said that the pressures were increased or something yes. like that Yes, so when you have a categorical history, would you not keep the cardiovascular involvement also in your mind? But ma'am, right? uh, like cardiovascular uh, system involved would be secondary to the respiratory. I agree, mm -hmm. but it could be a primary cardiac with a secondary respiratory also. But ma'am, requiring oxygen for one year will only be like cyanotic heart diseases, but it should present early in life if it is cyanotic heart disease. Do you really feel cyanotic heart diseases require oxygen for one year? In no, fact, you give them the oxygen. Mm -hmm. What will happen if you give too much oxygen to cyanotic heart diseases? They will deteriorate because of PDA or closure. Yeah, so that that is at birth and subsequently? If you give oxygen, even if a tetralogy, if you could, could you just elaborate on tetralogy treatment? I know it has nothing to do with this case, but since you mentioned oxygen as the first step, let's start with that. But um, I was saying that this child is requiring oxygen, so like uh, we have, uh, I have not kept it in CVS as a uh, different primary CVS cause. That's 
but in the summary i think it will be useful if you can say that yes this is could be a primary that's why you've kept respiratory system first right then yes. i would also like to rule out underlying cardiovascular involvement as a part of the secondary complication okay, okay. okay. third third differential uh, it could be a chronic infection um, localizing to respiratory system the chronic or... infection and the uh, require and the growth is absolutely okay till 2 years was well, only that the uh, i mean the intake was also okay you said that there is no yeah. problem with the intake a chronic infection a child will be eating normally with no deficit and the appetite will reduce mm. so that that is one history which is not matching your chronic infection right and a chronic infection will have only two episodes of fever prior to admission no ma'am more infection uh, more admission will be there yeah so you have to talk about immunological so how will you okay. rule out other immunological system involvement would be is the okay. history negative okay. history of rash and uh, yes joint pain yes um, other system involvements yes. like gi or cns yeah. involvement is there or not can it be something to do with connective tissue disorders yes ma'am so why haven't you kept that as a you know, history of fever with rash joint involvement okay so any any connective tissue disorder can have all the systems which are affected right multi systemic involvement right so that will be the fourth differential any gi thing someone has put it up in chat box uh, any gi no gi complaints ma'am there are But, no gi uh, complaints no ma'am okay but can a gi problem present to you with recurrent uh, oxygen dependency mam uh, uh, in uh, uh, involving multiple system then cystic fibrosis is one which will involve gi as well as rs so yes the involvement will be there yes and what else and, uh... young scatagenes what happens Cartilaginous can have like this. Mm. But so, what I'm trying to say is that you know, in in the exam, we are not really looking at the diagnosis. We are like we are looking at your thought process. So, how well you've rounded off your history, how well you've given your differential diagnosis, and how, according to your history, you've placed as number one, number two, number three, and number four. Okay. I think sir can ask you regarding the respiratory system. Uh, Kumar sir, Arvind Kumar sir. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for inviting me this uh, meeting. Uh, uh, I agree with Dr. Sampath. So I think we should avoid using acquired terms for uh, making summary, uh, because so many congenital and hereditary diseases can uh, can cause this, this kind of symptoms later on. Right? Like you can take uh, example of H-type fistula. Uh, take a fistula, fistula H-type, and later on present recurrent respiration and pneumonia. Uh, or you can take like even in uh, PID, uh, CVID can present in adult onset and in adult sense also they can present. So we'll avoid acquired term. Uh, in summary, we can say chronic lung disease can be infective etiology, can be non-infective. Infective will keep higher because every time child was uh, admitting uh, admitted for the with complaint of fever and she responded with some antibiotics and all. So we'll keep uh, keep higher compared to non-infective. And then we can keep lower down cardiac also because uh, uh, they can also cause this uh, chronic lung disease if not treated properly. Okay. Uh, then uh, CS uh, uh, CS talked about uh, onset on so it's very good that you use uh, onset it's acute onset inside yes onset age of onset also is important in this case is acquired versus uh, congenital hereditary. Uh, Uh, it's a good thing if you talk about uh, how was the child in between two episodes. Okay, if uh, if any disease is reversible or something, they'll present like such base to uh, touch to baseline or not that you can talk about in between. And uh, in history, you have covered most of the uh, diseases causing persistent or recurrent pneumonia. Like you, you talked about some immunodeficiency. You uh, talked about some. Uh, try to uh, exclude the PCD also. Uh, cystic fibrosis, Doctor uh, Doctor Sampada correctly said that we should uh, ask for uh, even GI symptoms 
persistent fibrosis failure to thrive she was there she was having uh, failure to thrive uh, in history wise environmental history is important if you are having child is chronic lyme disease or uh, to rule out uh, hypersensitive pneumonitis okay they can they can also be have like recurrent pneumonia with fever every time or require long term oxygen and so on. okay and one more thing like feeding history how mother was giving feed or in early childhood or later also like there is there any forced food pre non target hai bhag jada baad mein ki kuch bhi so uh, you can add feeding history in detail okay which for instance and what methods they are using for giving feed so what there any indication on that ready you can proceed now link na dikha to hai end bhi hello yes hello you can proceed dear yeah you can proceed dr riya you can go ahead a uh, general examination child is sitting comfortably in bed oxygen connected by nasal prongs at 2 liters per minute intracath and left forearm temperature is a febrile or uh, 98 degree fahrenheit pulse uh, pulse rate was 112 per minute regular in rhythm normal volume no radio radial or radio femoral delay all peripheral pulses were well felt crt was less than 3 seconds respiratory rate was 30 per minute regular abdominal thoracic on oxygen and 45 per minute on room air uh, blood pressure was 82 by 56 mm of mercury in right arm supine position that is 50th percentile for this child uh, spo2 was 85% on room air and 98% on oxygen at 2 liters per minute a uh, moderate pallor was present no icterus cyanosis clubbing or edema, uh, edema or lymphadenopathy was seen anthropometry uh, ria uh, just a correction three. what do you mean by moderate pallor oh uh, ma'am this child was uh, mucosa uh, lower palpebral conjunctiva and uh, skin of the child was uh, pale so what is mild moderate and severe pallor on clinical examination Uh, ma'am, mild. Uh, when we see on mucus, like uh, mucous membranes, uh, lower palpebral conjunctiva, uh, moderate is uh, that involving uh, along with skin of the child and on palms and creases. If they are also pale, then we say it is severe anemia. What is the reference for this? What is the IMNCI module say? You've read IMNCI module, right? IMNCI module is supposed to be read by all of us, right? So do do they grade pallor in mild, moderate, severe? There is pallor which is present or absent, and very severe pallor that is on your the creases which you are talking about, right? So what I am trying to tell you is that avoid these funny terms as mild, this thing, moderate, that thing. It's not really given in any standard textbooks, okay? So sometimes you know the examiner just can trouble you over these things. especially when he's got 15 candidates to be judging you so it can create a problem so avoid these terms okay so pallor is present period okay if it is severe pallor you can say yeah the creases were absent not well defined so severe pallor present okay okay theek okay. hai okay go ahead anthropometry wise uh, weight of the child is 10 kg height 87 cm um Child, uh, if i ask you one thing riya in your police pickle whatever you people call it 
the cyanosis clubbing lymphadenomatrix vagra which is the most important criteria that you would have looked for as a physician so they out of all the general examination findings if you look at your last line what is the most important finding that you and do you really feel there is no cyanosis Oh, uh, ma'am, child was on oxygen, so there was so no sinusitis. So that's the point. So uh, what did you just mention prior to this? That the child's uh, saturations were, air. yeah, on room it air, the saturations air. were eighty-five, and then the yes, blue, the lips and the tongue turn blue when the child does not get and oxygen. Child was so oxygen. can you mention that yes, this ma'am. child is not sinusitis? He is uh, sinusitis. On removing oxygen, sinusitis. See, there, the yes, point ma'am. is that. You are contradicting your own statement, right? पहले लाइन में लिखा है 85 परसेंट है SpO2 है एंड दूसरे लाइन में बोल रहे हैं there is no cyanosis. Are you getting the point? So say that there is cyanosis okay. present on room air, um, which is central, room, but it is eliminated okay. by two liters of oxygen. Make yourself very clear over there. Okay. Second okay. thing is in the same sentence, if I would have said that there is clubbing also. Supposing I would right now there is no clubbing. Is there an importance no, no, no. to that clubbing or no? Yes, ma'am. So can you just Club elaborate what is the importance of clubbing in such a patient? Um, ma'am, if the child child is having chronic or uh, respiratory disease where hypoxia is there, then the child will develop clubbing. Like over one yes. year, the child should develop. But since the child yeah, was so on oxygen, you, we... correct. So do you think that? Not mentioning clubbing, or he does not have clubbing, is adds to your diagnosis and prognosis. Mum, no clubbing was there. So, so you're right. Maybe I'm not saying that the clubbing was there. There is no clubbing. I agree with you. But how does it help you by saying that there is no clubbing in this child? Um, mum, that means maybe that uh, after providing oxygen, the child is maintaining. Like, uh, if it would be like bronchitis. then the child would have clubbing and uh, other diseases like um uh, this um so okay bronchitis is one in your diagnosis if there was clubbing bronchitis would have been one of the list on the list what else other gi conditions like ulcerative colitis crohn's disease so, git to abhi soch nahi rahe na hum log respiratory ka soch rahe na abhi Um, lung abscess will have clubbing, okay. ma'am, and uh, repeated microabscesses. Tumors, abscesses, okay. bronchial okay. tumors will also uh, respond. And also, treatment. what will a clubbing tell you that the child, by providing oxygen, the peripheral tissues have not grown? That means you are going to probably give a good prognosis if you treat this child well, right? That is another way of looking at it. Okay, so. Clubbing yeah. and cyanosis. थोड़ा सा ध्यान से इसमें yes or no बोल देना, ठीक है? Okay, आगे बोल, चलो, go ahead. जो कोई matter, child is moderately malnourished. Head to toe examination, hair was normal, eyes normal, ear, nose and throat was normal. कितना है उसका? No wait, uh, wait for relief. कितना हुआ? Can you just go back? Oh, uh, ma'am, wait for height is third to fiftieth percentile. Okay, ठीक. Uh, no signs of vitamin deficiency in form of eye skin mucosal nail or uh, hair or bone changes no uh, neurocutaneous markers respiratory system examination why did you ask for neurocutaneous tract? markers in this child uh, why did you ask for neurocutaneous markers in this child Do you know any neurocutaneous syndrome which has this kind of presentation? Can't think of it right now as no. as of now. So don't mention this. This could be taken very well if you were presenting a neurological case, right? So don't you know? Sometimes when the examiner is quite relaxed in his chair and suddenly he hears this line, you know, he might just get up asking you, "Why did you ask this?" Okay. So it is not necessary right now. 
unless of course rajesh sir arvind kumar sir can you think of any neurocutaneous syndrome causing such kind of presentation yeah sometimes ataxia attacks at elongated yeah yeah recurrent uh, synovial infection and uh, harman gottlieb syndrome also having some albinisms of foreheads and uh, the scalp and all so they can present recurrent pulmonary hemorrhage harman gottlieb syndromes and ataxia at elongated can present okay sir okay. thank you sir okay so unless you know this riya don't talk about it okay okay go ahead uh, upper respiratory tract examination nose was normal no discharge or uh, flaring frontal and maxillary sinus is normal no tenderness pharynx normal no con movements on both sides of the chest no dilated veins any visible pulsations any scar or sinus over the chest no tracheal deviation hello actually i don't know if it's on my side uh, actually you were not audible at all dear ria um ma'am from which slide uh, from your examination onwards from the upper respiratory i think everything went off the screen uh, sorry ma'am for the inconvenience no no that's okay i don't know whether it's from your side or my side that's oh, upper respiratory tract examination okay can you just start from the respiratory system examination yes forget the upper respiratory uh, inspection normal abdominal thoracic respiration no nasal flaring or retractions chest shape normal equal movements of chest on both sides no dilated veins any visible pulsations or any scar sinus over the chest no tracheal deviation a pyical impulse at fifth intercostal space in mid clavicular line just medial to the nipple back examination was normal on palpation tracheal position was confirmed apex beat position was confirmed respiratory movements equal on both sides vocal fremitus equal in all areas uh, on percussion resonant node uh, in all areas was heard on auscultation bilateral vocal, vocal fremitus what is oh. vocal fremitus can you go to palpation yes ma'am yeah can you just elaborate on um, uh, on uh, chest exam uh, on respiratory system examination when we place our palmar side uh, on the chest of the uh, baby uh, child in uh, mm -hmm. all the areas like supra uh, scapular uh, then infra scapular uh, infra mammillary area then we can feel the uh, what the child is uh, we feel that vibrations uh, this 
child was not saying but crying during the examination so we felt the vibrations of the um, which the child was crying and we were uh, we could feel hmm. so what is the significance of it uh, ma'am it is absent if uh, like pleural effusion is there or uh, pneumothorax is there hmm. and um, it is reduced in uh, collapse of the lung uh, hmm. it is increased in uh, consolidations ma'am why in cyst um in consolidation um, like a solid is a better uh, conducting medium for sound so we feel uh, um, hmm. so in your respiratory system you did not actually feel anything going wrong till percussion yes right? ma'am absolutely normal yes ma'am okay fine go ahead on auscultation bilateral reciprocal breath sounds are present in all areas there was no adventitious sounds present and no, uh, vocal resonance was normal other system examination s1 s2 heard no murmur uh, on parabdo examination it was soft non tender which no is the most it. important respiratory uh, uh, cardiovascular examination in this child if you ask me one area that you have to auscultate or feel or palpate which would be that area uh, pulmonary area ma'am why uh, for uh, uh, pulmonary atresia and pulmonary stenosis ma'am which so is really atresia and stenosis important here uh, yes ma'am uh, like if the child is having underlying top physiology so but in an underlying top physiology the oxygen saturation will improve with the oxygen 100% oh. then you give me an examination finding that 100% yeah. oxygen saturation right yes, in the pulmonary area you gave a very particular history and that's why that s1 s2 normal cannot i have i will take with a pinch of salt priya what cardiac pathology will you expect in this child um pulmonary hypertension ma'am because of correct the... so what what is the sign what are the three signs of pulmonary hypertension on clinical examination riya uh, that's all the heart sound uh, diastolic shock will be present ma'am yeah what i'm sorry uh, diastolic shock ma'am perfect on palpation diastolic shock okay. what is diastolic shock uh, Uh, we feel it on the palmar surface of the hand um, like uh, when the child is um, lying down in supine position and we make the child sit uh, so there is thrill um, that we thrill. feel diastolic shock hota hai na beta mm-hmm. thrill kaise hoga uh, a palpable um, like we feel that palpable s2 sound uh, correct so palpable second heart sound. sound is called as a diastolic shock so you will get a loud s2 correct that is one sign what is the second sign of pulmonary hypertension auscultation work i will what will happen you just said thrill something like that na yes ma'am so thrill is auscultation la kai asto what will you get on auscultation is there any early diastolic murmur aste ka beta tithe oh yes ma'am but because of okay because of uh, higher pressures required so Uh, blood will uh, okay so you will get a diastolic murmur there right and what is any name of that murmur okay and the third third physical finding of our pulmonary hypertension on clinical examination what will happen to the splitting ria uh, there will be white uh, white uh, fixed split ma'am white fixed split kashat asto beta when will you get white and fixed split which congenital heart disease has white and fixed split it is the pathognomonic sign 
MS. No, congenital heart, na no? sir is asking congenital heart, na no? MS is an acquired heart. Atrial septal, come on. Hmm? Okay. ASD, right? And when we say fixed, what do you mean by fixed here? Yeah? Do you know this? Um, Why it is understandable during... that it is separated, A two P two is separated. What does fixed mean? On uh, inspiration and expiration also. Um, right. And the change of position also. The it remains constant, isn't it? So that is wide and fixed. So what will happen in pulmonary hypertension to the second heart sound P two? It will be loud. <laughs> yes, it will be loud, but will be will it be uh, split or no? A two P two I ko eto kan nae. Other A two will be drowned in P two. A single I ko eto kan it will be split B two. Okay, single single will be there. Okay, so it will be a very loud single S two over there. Okay, so these are three. All of us, all of the students who are listening. Please know that all clinical examinations, whether it is respiratory or cardiovascular, has to be known by you. The heart sounds, the murmurs, whatever. Okay, and even if it is, see, why I am asking you these questions because you took the entire case on respiratory. Now the examiner once he gets a feeling that you are very very comfortable, we probably know the diagnosis also. He is going to take you into a territory by our own finding because you gave me one history that you know there were pressures which were increased for which some medications were given. Right. Yes, ma'am. So probably you were talking about pulmonary hypertension, which was setting in. Right. That's what you meant. So then that S two should have been loud there. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Fine. Tell me. Aage. For abdomen, soft, non-tender, no organomegaly. A uh, CNS child is conscious, cooperative, oriented to time, place, and person. Riya, what is there in the substernum? Can you see that? Yeah, pe side pe. If you look at on inspection, yes, uh, can you see a sulcus? Bilateral. Oh, um, ma'am, the yeah, child. Yeah. So what is what is that sign? What is it for, because of? Ma'am, the child was sitting in uh, such a position with the. Uh, Like abdomen was protruded, so because of uh, malnutrition, also we can get uh, this. Suppose the child is uh, not malnourished, but has a certain vitamin D deficiency. Vitamin Then, deficiency. Then uh, Harrison sulcus, sir. Then Harrison yes. sulcus. Yes. So can you tell me three conditions Although, where you will get such a sulcus in the substernum space? Is, substernal uh, space. So one you said is. This is not typical Harrison sulcus. This is not typical. No, Harrison this is not typical Harrison sulcus, though. Um, this vitamin D deficiency. Uh, then hmm. in uh, malnutrition, uh, we can get this. In uh, malnutrition, in fact, you don't get that sulcus because you generally do not get vitamin D deficiency in malnutrition. Anyways, this child is not malnourished, right? You said she's got centiles between thirtieth to fiftieth, no? Yes. Third to fiftieth. Rhea, which type of rickets may develop in a malnourished child? Generally, we say rickets is a disease of growing bones. So, what is the rickets of malnourishment called? Can you tell us? Um, ma'am, when uh, like healing, uh, when the child is improving, then we can see this. It is a uh, hypocalc. No, no, no. There's a name for that rickets, right? Um, uh, Um, I forgot the name. If you are not growing well, what will you have? What will happen to your organs? If you don't put anything to use, atrophic. Atrophic. Ah, correct. Okay. ठीक है. आगे बोलो. A final impression. Three and a half year girl. A uh, case of chronic a uh, severe respiratory system disorder. Most probably an interstitial lung disease. Mostly due to post-infectious uh, immune mediated with or uh, immune mediated with persistent oxygen requirement with failure to thrive. Now, why is there a lung disease? Respiratory system had no finding whatsoever. Not a single finding in the respiratory system and general examination pointing towards the lung. Oh, ma'am, uh, person. 
assistant tachypnea is there or uh, requiring so that can happen oxygen because of renal tubular acidosis also mam but it will present acutely it should not be persistent uh, no in rta will rta type 1 will present like this only just tachypnea but oxygen requirement is also there mam for one year the child is on oxygen so there also the child will have any other chronic illness also the child will be oxygen especially a child who is anemic but uh, mam for anemia uh, after blood transfusion the requirement of oxygen should be reduced mm. in this child we have all I mean, like transfusion was already received previously but oxygen requirement was still there so are there any lung diseases that may course. not have any findings yeah uh, so can you tell us conditions which will not give you any finding i mean uh, like interstitial lung disease uh, we will not find um, in it, uh, like in interstitial lung disease the um, air entry will be equal uh, there may or may not be uh, subcostal or intercostal retractions also but this child probably has had subcostal retractions in the past Mm-hmm. So what I am trying to ask you: Can you elaborate the subtle signs of respiratory involvement in this child from general and systemic examination? Mom, cyanosis on room air. Correct. Very good. So cyanosis on room air. Then. Um. Uh, Mom, the child getting breathless. Uh. when oxygen support has removed and the child is uh, okay, on so oxygen dependency that's yes, what you're saying oxygen dependency okay third um i can't think of any other okay did you look at the chest size and the chest say shape of this child put the photo in place please hmm. can you talk about the chest shape which diameter is normally bigger ap or uh, horizontal what this thing ma'am uh, horizontal to iska kya hua hai chest shape ka Ma'am, did you uh, take the dimensions, dear? Um, yes, ma'am, but not. Um, uh, AP diameter was, but it was not so much in uh increase, ma'am. Rajesh, होता था जी barrel shape chest होती का? Not, not very prominent. I wouldn't call it. But ऐसा मधे माला थोड़ा सा थोड़ा bulging वाटते हैं ना मंजे या photo तक लीज maybe because the child is sitting yeah. or something like sitting, that. Sitting, yeah. So, But not uh, strikingly emphysematous or. Oh yeah, so emphysematous is something which I wanted her to tell me basically. And Ria, was this chest you told me a resonant? Was this chest not very hi- hyper resonant? No, ma'am, it was resonant. It was resonant. Okay. And can you see those sulci? So which is telling me which muscle is put being put to use for a very long time from this picture? It is very obvious. Which is the muscle which is really working hard in this child? So, if you have anybody who is working hard, breathing hard for a very long time, there is a possibility that those diaphragmatic attachments, you know, they they become extremely, extremely prominent. So that is again a subtle sign which tells you this this work of breathing has been going on for a very long time. So again, and now how, if at all, how will the interstitial lung disease present to you? You've been giving me that diagnosis right from the summary. Oh, uh, ma'am, they will have tachypnea. Uh, like breathlessness will be there, uh, and mild cough may or may not be there, and uh, hypoxia. Uh, the, the child can have hypoxia. Uh, and, uh, 
clinical signs on respiratory system examination um uh, in interstitial lung disease the signs may be normal uh, like respiratory system examination may be normal or uh, if like uh, min uh, minimal subcostal uh, retraction intercostal retractions can be there if parenchyma is also involved with interstitial lung disease what will happen i mean kumar sir can you please add that, to no, this when we first saw the patient uh, yeah so currently we are not in position to tell if uh, she is having ilp uh, because uh, by definition if we want to label as ilp we require out of four criteria three should be there okay one is respiratory symptoms another is sign third one hypoxia and fourth one is bilateral infiltration and chest x ray imaging okay so we couldn't get any uh, sign uh, those she was having symptoms fast breathing and cough and all uh and then the, the uh, hypoxia is there so two signs out of four is only present uh so at as of now we can say still having some chronic lung disease uh so again on the before labeling ild we should rule out diffuse lung disease other possibility of diffuse lung disease like cystic fibrosis pcd or hp or recurrent aspirations okay or cardiac disease and all so uh so it's uh, before i mean we as of now we cannot say it's ild okay. um that's we can say right now also oh, like okay. uh, for uh, cystic fibrosis uh, there was no other system involvement at present yeah it's very mm -hmm. unlikely uh, yeah it's yeah. very unlikely that she is having respiratory distress for more than one year and uh, requiring so much oxygen and there is no finding in lung in both side okay uh, that can happen in case of like is having some uh, right to left shunt in with some ev malformation or something but in that case the retraction will not be there so definitely lungs having some sign or symptom something maybe some because of some treatment or maybe post bronchodilation or something so we are missing the sign uh for uh, for uh, cystic fibrosis rule out yeah a uh, uh, relatively child is pre out there is no history of uh, diarrhea uh, but any chronic lung disease we should rule out by doing sweat chloride test uh, before labeling it's not having cystic fibrosis cystic fibrosis even uh, can present without uh, gi symptoms also even uh, sometimes they present only chronic diarrhea without respiratory system so okay so chronic lung disease rule out for cystic fibrosis because it's like least invasive on sweat chloride test if possible we should rule out by doing this sir i wanted to ask you mm -hmm. uh, when we say cystic fibrosis will bronchiectasis be a very prominent uh, you know finding yes. in this yes. uh, so in that case uh, they will present with chronic wet cough uh, chronic yeah. wet cough with recurrent pneumonia of and all that so by history she was having fever with respiratory distress requiring oxygen it's okay chronic wet cough and sputum production by 3 and 1/2 years she should have some sputum production so yeah that will be one more thing uh, you know i was uh, wondering because this the timeline is such that you know she had the first episode when covid was around mm -hmm. and her pcr was done but that was negative mm -hmm. so in adults uh, they have described that you know there can be fibrosis post covid Mm -hmm. so what about pediatric age group and is it a possibility in this child so uh, normally we label post viral bronchiolitis obliterans or or uh, if like severe disease like bronchiolitis obliterans organizing pneumonia group these two terms we use uh, that like post bronchiolitis children is less than one year or something severe bronchiolitis they can go into the fibrosis and they they can have bronchiolitis obliterans uh, um, but in uh, post covid uh, in late, uh, some case reports are there but i have not seen any pro post covid uh, posing some bronchiolitis obliterans or some uh, chronic lung disease in children uh, maybe adolescents they were having but in pediatric age group i have not seen till now though though, though few case reports uh, i have read the uh, this covid causes uh, post covid lung sequelae causing fibrosis progressive fibrosis in fact and some organizing pneumonia uh, but they present dry cough and the course should be like static or at least improving it's not progressive correct okay 
uh, investigations um in 2021 admission the child's hemoglobin was 2 uh, after which the child required blood transfusion uh, in our hospital when the child was admitted uh, one sec ria i don't think you can give the 2021 admission details right now because okay. like in the exam you are not supposed to know this for our sake for learning purposes fine but uh, you're not supposed to say all this okay because okay. apparently you've not seen the papers right yes ma'am okay uh, hemoglobin in our hospital it was 4.6 uh, initially crp and esr was high on the uh, at the time of admission uh, it is normal now uh, on uh, peripheral blood smear we have seen a uh, microcytic hypochromic anemia is present um, hiv test was done it was negative uh, 2d echo finding uh, was a uh, structurally normal heart with normal biventricular function and moderate uh, moderate pulmonary hypertension uh, this is the x ray of the child hrct was done showing mild cardiomegaly extensive diffuse ground glass haziness is seen in bilateral lung parenchyma areas of consolidations were seen in all lobes of bilateral lung parenchyma predominantly in the perihilar region in the upper right middle and lower lobes other investigations we have done was uh, bronchoscopy uh, then uh, bronchoalveolar lavage was done showing hemosiderin laden ma macrophages uh, ana in this child came positive other investigations were normal uh, in our hospital uh, we have given ivig to this child and started on prednisolone spo2 on room air was 76 at the uh, like before the treatment was given and after that uh, in 4 to 5 days it is improved to 85% um, on room air saturation after the initiation of the treatment so why an ivig uh, ma'am since ana was positive uh, we thought that this is uh, a autoimmune disease um, like uh, and um, could be vasculitis, uh, so we have given IVI. So vasculitis, did this child have any rash and symptoms suggestive of vasculitis? No, no, there was nothing else. And the second thing is that will only prednisolone not work? Do you really need an IVIG? Because it's a cost, cost uh, it's a high cost treatment, right? So will giving IVIG help you in any way or only a methylprednisolone would have helped um ma'am methylprednisolone could uh, could have helped uh, ivig alternate uh, is methyl can you tell me the indications of ivig in pediatrics um ma'am like uh, misc we give ivig uh, do you give I, I, for all MISC? Do you give IVIG? Uh, no, ma'am. In which uh, cardiac involvement uh, mm -hmm. aneurysms are there? Mm -hmm. Then uh, Kawasaki, mm -hmm. we give IVIG. Mm -hmm. um, in sepsis, also we give, ma'am, but it is not uh, like uh, it is not. In neurological disease, more common indications you should tell first. Any neurological disease? Where consists the spine? Ka consa disease may. Which neurological disease do you give IVIG first, Ria? Rajesh, they have seen more missing negating it. No, now GBS, ma'am. Gulen Bari. GBS, very good. Yeah, so GBS, you get it. Okay. Then you told us Kawasaki, then you told us Missy. Where else will you give IVIG? Any hematological indications? Um, um, hematological. Hmm. Uh, autoimmune hemolytic uh, anemia ma'am in autoimmune hemolytic anemia okay but something Anything more, more common, common, more something common. Very common your nicu posting is over beta uh, yes ma'am uh, so can you tell me some neonatology uh, ma'am uh, neonatal uh, in uh, thrombos uh, all uh, allo immune uh, neonatal thrombocytopenia Aluminum, okay, but thrombocytopenia, something more common in a uh, hyperbilium. Um, uh, um, 
एबीओ इनकम्पैटेबिलिटी मांग हाँ सो एबीओ से ज्यादा क्या विच कम्युनिट कम्पैटेबल आर एच इनकम्पैटेबिलिटी मांग आर एच तो टॉक अबाउट कॉमन इंडिकेशंस फर्स्ट ना बिकॉज़ इन यू नो यू कैन डिफेंड योर आंसर्स प्रीडी मच कॉमन ओके इफ यू गो टू द प्रीवियस स्लाइड योर ईएसआर एंड सीआरपी वर नॉट ग्रेट इन 2022 नो गो टू मैम राइट नाउ इट वाज डन इन आर यू एक्सपेक्ट नहीं टेल मी समथिंग डू यू एक्सपेक्ट अ ईएसआर ऑफ 20 एंड अ सीआरपी ऑफ 4 एंड विल एन आईवीआईजी रियली हेल्प यू नो मैम How do you justify collagen vascular your? Uh, Ma'am, uh, in bronchial levels, we have uh, like we got hemosiderin leading macrophages. So, so what is macrophage um, activating is, syndromes? Pulmonary. Uh, Ria, yeah. um, what are macrophage condition? activating syndromes, and which are the diseases which can cause MAS or hemophagocytosis? Ma'am, uh, it can also be there with Kawasaki. um and uh, um post post infections it can happen uh, uh in ms ma'am uh, there is uh, reduced uh, esr is reduced and uh, crp is high mm. and can you tell me the criteria for hlh can you tell me hlh criteria because you have you have a mildly enlarged heart you have a pulmonary pressure which is going up and apparently no lung findings which is the most common um, immunological diagnosis ma'am oh. ma'am tell me which other investigation will help you establish the diagnosis Yes, Can you tell me the HLH criteria, Ria? Okay. Can ferritin in lipase? Yeah, connection is a problem. I think, Doctor Ria, can you hear us? I think Hello? she's lost. Ka. Ria, are you there? Okay. I think. Uh, yeah. Now she's back. Hello, Ria. Can you hear us? Hello. Hello. Uh, can you hear us too? hello yeah can you tell the criteria for hlh hello can you hear us yes sir what are the criteria for hlh um uh, ma'am persistent fever uh, uh, there is a uh, splenomegaly uh, with the hepatomegaly present uh, the um, there is increase in uh, inflammatory markers ma'am like uh, 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 hmm. What will you look for in your CBC? Recording in progress. Uh, Ma'am, thrombocytopenia will be there. So, is it only thrombocytopenia, or is it how many cell lines? By cytopenia or thrombocytopenia? How many cell lines should be reduced, Ria? At least. I think we lost. Doctor Ria, are you able to hear us? Hello. Hello, I'm audible, uh, sir. I'm audible. Yes, you are. Yeah, now you're audible. Yes, so, sir. how many cell lines do you want involved? Uh, Only platelet uh, is enough. No, uh, by side opinion should be there. Okay, so at least two cell lines. Okay, yes. should be reduced. Okay, what is the diagnostic test for HLH? Uh, bone marrow, ma'am. But yeah. uh, sometimes it is not also uh, like macrophages are not seen in bone marrow also. Okay, 
Yeah, but doing if you are strongly suspecting that a bone marrow should be done, and you should document. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you know the macrophages uh, which are eating the RBCs, isn't it? Yeah. So uh, one more thing is, uh, what are the two types of HLH? I know the discussion is going sideways a little bit, but because we are on this topic, you should know. What are the two types of HLH? How do you classify it? I will read sir more on HLH. Okay. All right. So coming back, okay. sir, uh, Dr. Kumar, sir, I wanted to ask is because, uh, you know, we don't see so much of chronic lung disease in children. Uh, uh, I wanted you to, uh, you know, teach us or tell us uh, how do we approach a child who is suspected to have a chronic lung disease? Uh, right. So thank you, sir. So first of all, this our case is uh, particular definition so persistent pneumonia something because if you have, if you do uh, repeated chest X ray, uh, she'll be having this uh, opacity, persistent opacity uh, more than three months, then she's treating the persistent pneumonia. Okay, and then we'll uh, we'll rule out first common causes of persistent pneumonia and like including uh, PCD, cystic fibrosis, or some recurrent expression because of airway malformations or congenital malformations in lung by doing CT and all. And then we can rule out hypersensitive pneumonitis by doing the HP panel or some, if you're having history-wise specific exposure, then we can ask for uh, an antibody level also for a specific uh, hypersensitive pneumonitis. After ruling out this common enemies uh, causes, then we'll go for uh, ILD. ILD, uh, we'll see that uh, I'm normally before labeling ILD, we ask for CT scan, HR CT scan. So uh, in that case, uh, sometimes CT scan itself is like giving a clue for, towards specific diagnosis, especially if a child is less than two years, we can make diagnosis of some rare disease and yet to see, like I have not seen this knee high or PIG and all, but surfactant metabolic disorders, we can find out. They can present later on like protein C, or ABC3 or NKX2 mutation, they can present three years, four years later on also. So in that case, uh, CT scan will give some clue, right? Crazy paving evidence in CT scan, we can find out. So first of all, will chronic uh, persistent pneumonia, we'll ask for X-ray. If X-ray and history wise, there is no clue, then we'll ask for CT scan. CT scan sometimes can be confirmative or diagnosis like two, three, and even hypersensitive pneumonitis also, we can make diagnosis based on the, on the CT scan. Uh, and uh, if uh, by CT scan also, if you are getting some clue regarding like some fluffy shadow in uh, periphery or some migratory uh, opacity, like recurrent, uh, then hyper uh, isnophilic lung pneumonia, or sometimes only basal lobe is involved and paratracheal involved, then we we'll think of uh, as recurrent aspiration and all. So after CT scan, uh, will uh, depending on the clue or depending on history and examination will rule out uh, immunodeficiency uh, and then uh, specific diagnosis by uh, still not there we, after doing immunodeficiency workup is still not there when we can go for Im invasive workup for bronchoscopy uh, bronchoscopy will do some therapeutic and diagnostic both therapeutic like we can assess some airway malformations so some malaysia malaysia can aggravate aspiration and uh, then we can do for bowel cytology and the uh, bowel uh, culture also for infective work. Uh, especially if like PID, if you're suspecting PID, we can do uh, PJP, CMV, and you know, viral uh, panels also in that case. Or sometimes NTM also we can detect in bowel cytology or tuberculosis work. We can send it. Child is small, it's not able to uh, produce sputum. So uh, after CT scan, we'll do bowel cytology and bowel cytology. So many stain we can do for detecting different different etiology like oil stain for uh, recurrent aspiration in this case like we did uh, pearl stain uh, Persian blue that uh, is for hemocytin or some BAH we can pick up and they, they are though they are the criteria for labeling before making the diagnosis normally uh, macrophase hemocytin macrophase we can see up to three percent in normal cytology but in this case uh, I think it's more than ninety percent macrophase were. Uh, having the hemocytin uh, pigments. Uh, then, so other like past stain also for, uh, uh, we can detect PEP and surfactant metabolism. So, so we'll do bowel, cytolo bowel cytology for staining and culture also. It's still not there, there's still confusion, then we'll go for genetic workup. So that is uh, like, there's no fixed hard and fast 
uh, flow diagram, but in, we'll start with imaging and history and physical examination. We can go for CT scan and after that we can decide different different etiology like this, whether it's infective, whether it's non-infective, whether it's autoimmune or whether it's because of environment exposure. In that case, we can ask for some uh, hypersensitivity panel also or investigation for hypersensitivity. Great. So, uh, sir, just one question. Have you ever seen this kind of picture after pigeon uh, droppings? Yeah, uh, I did my DM from Ames, uh, Delhi, and there were, uh, there were many cases, especially uh, this uh, remote, the overcrowded area in Delhi is that there's a uh, habit of uh, this pigeon poultry also. Yeah. So there were, there were avian antigens positivity with the recurrent pneumonia. Uh, in fact, Sometimes you may get confused with consolidations and whether it's having consolidated so much air bronchogram in X-ray. Uh, but if you do uh, this savian antigen, that's a strongly positive. With, so, and uh, in typical, typical history, they present that whenever they are in hospital, they'll okay, after going home immediately within one or two days, they'll again become sick and having <laughs> fever and uh, respect distress and uh, X-ray opacity. So these were, the, it's common, we can say like, over three years in my DM, I, I saw there are 20, 30 cases of pigeon hypersensitivity in pediatric cases presenting with as a chronic pneumonia or recurrent pneumonia. Yes, thank you, sir. So uh, I think for this case, uh, we, we referred this child to AFMC for uh, doing a bronchoscopy and uh, lavage. And thankfully, Dr. Kumar sir was there. So he helped us. Uh, you know, diagnose this case. Uh, sir, what about lung biopsy? Is there any indication? Or, yeah, uh, uh, is so this ANA positivity is again, uh, uh, it's not confirmatory for diagnosis. The so gold standard for diagnosis is lung biopsy only. Uh, right. Uh, but in that case, uh, lung biopsy is invasive procedure because we, uh, first thing is pediatric surgery, people will not agree to uh, operate this child, so taking open lung biopsy because they'll say it's already hypoxic and unstable. Yeah. So very difficult to convince them to take open lung biopsy. Second one is cryobiopsy. Cryobiopsy requires rigid bronchoscopy and uh, so much precautions for to avoid this bleeding because we are uh, tearing out some piece lung tissue. As though that people are doing uh, like higher center in Chennai and other centers, even M's also doing lung biopsy with cryo. Uh, that is one uh, option we can ask for, but this is a slightly invasive procedure. And uh, yeah. then we have given low dose of steroids uh, with IVIG, like just like uh, over conscious uh, approach. We don't want to expose the 30 mg per kg person because we were not sure about the diagnosis. We saw that low dose steroid with IVIG showed some response, then we can say, hi, huh, it's uh, autoimmune disease. Now we can go with next. Uh, normally pulse we do and when there is a uh, life threatening or uh, fresh pulmonary hemorrhage that time we we'll do pulse and uh, but in case of vasculitis in this case i was suspecting uh, necrotizing uh, cysts were there in a ct scan so i was suspecting vesner's vasculitis and they can present like necrotizing uh, cyst with dh uh, though anka was negative but we can repeat later on also with the IF methods, specifically ask for IF methods. So that is, uh, that we can do as normally autoimmune connective tissue disorders generally present with some pleuritis or pleural effusion rather than uh, BAH. Vasculitis they can present like this, but SLE or some other scleroderma or ZDM and uh, all these mixed connective tissue disorder, they present with pleuritis or chest pain and some pleural effusion or sometimes Pneumonitis, rarely they can present pulmonary hemorrhage. Yes. Dr. Ria, do you have any more slides or you are uh, done here? Done, sir. Okay. Uh, any more questions, uh, Dr. Sampada? Do you have any questions for her? No, no, I think we've asked her enough. <laughs> we've had her enough. So, no, I think your questions are very, very useful for the exam purposes also. I think all postgraduates should uh, definitely attend and uh, they will know. Uh, uh, one, one person has asked, can we summarize the case for late joinees? Dr. Ria, can you summarize the case? Uh, 
the case was of a th- uh, three and a half year female uh, girl child uh, having chronic uh, respiratory system dis- uh, interstitium uh, which was immune mediated uh, the child was uh, persistently on oxygen requirement and failure to thrive and showed improvement after giving ivig and prednisolone great Okay, the only, the only uh, one second, Rajesh, just to wind up, only be very careful when you are saying that there are nil findings in the chest area. Yeah, you Especially with oxygen dependency. Yeah. I mean, sometimes the examiner might just get up and he might just find a few wrong guy here and there and crepes here and there and then you've had it. So when you're saying there are nil findings, then you'll have to justify yourself. That's the only thing which I think can be a take home for you. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yes. Agree. Hello. Okay. Yeah, you can sum up, Rajesh. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah. yeah. So a uh, very rare case, and uh, I wanted uh, Dr. Ria to present because she was uh, working on this case for the last nearly 10-15 days. Uh, this patient is admitted with us, and thankfully, with IV agent uh, steroids, the child is improving, and in fact, she is quite playful now and quite active now, and her saturations are also improving. So take home messages that you know we require sometimes uh, a lot of support we require from uh, pulmonologist, pediatric pulmonologist, uh, doing invasive, uh, less invasive procedures like a bal and uh, cytology and you know workup is necessary sometimes. You can uh, make a clinical diagnosis, but in some cases you will require uh, laboratory support also and a differentiation between say a cardiac and a respiratory case. Uh, is important first for a postgraduate because that is what would commonly be asked uh, to you. Why is this not a cardiac case? So that you should be able to say. Uh, you should be able to localize the disease as you know upper airway, lower airway. Uh, is it uh, you know bronchiolar? Is it alveolar? Is it interstitial? Is it vascular? Is it pleural? So that anatomy and microanatomy, I think, uh, is very important. And uh, if you make a syndromic diagnosis also, it is uh, acceptable for the exam. So I think uh, this probably sums it up. And uh, most likely we'll have the next uh, session on next Wednesday. So within five days, six days, we'll have a session again. And that time, uh, Kashibai Navale Medical College uh, would be presenting a case. Uh, we did not have last week a session because of the twin conferences, but hopefully uh, in the next seven days, we'll have one more session before the Diwali break. So thank you very much, Dr. Ria, for this uh, presentation. And I appreciate the faculty who have uh, spent their time. And thank you very much. Thank you so much, all of you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Rajesh. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you for inviting me. And uh, very well presented by Dr. Ria, moderated by Dr. Sampada. I uh, just wanted to add one thing, like while presentation, uh, Dr. Ria, try to interpret X-ray and CT scan yourself. Uh, then yeah. okay. okay, thank yeah, you. So Physiologists sometimes, yeah, they, they have their own pattern of reporting. Mm. So I think uh, you need to interpret it yourself. I agree. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you well done, much. Dr. Ria. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you.